well, I mean, right wing extremists are anti everybody that's not them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the yeah, that is true. This is very <laughs> much true. Yes, we had um, we had an awful incident in Germany recently, which I think everyone might have heard about. Um, there was a synagogue in Halle, and a young right wing extremist wanted to attack it. And when he arrived, he had trouble getting through the door. And there was a German woman that passed by. And I find this somehow so sad. There is this um, expression in Germany. Germany is a, um, is a country that is often like um, in a bad mood. So <laughs> there is this phrase that you say in German when you just find something like annoying that another person is doing, you say, Muss das sein? <laughs> and it's like, does this really have to be? And there was this woman who came by the synagogue and saw him trying to get to the door and was like, Muss das jetzt sein? Like, does this really have to happen right now as I'm passing? And he shot her. And no, nobody ever talks about this. It's, it's, we, we, we talk about the, the attack on the synagogue that failed, but we don't talk about the fact that he shot this German woman oh, passing by, oh. and then he went, because he failed at the synagogue, he went to the, the Duna uh, shop looking for a Muslim. Yeah. But he couldn't find yeah. a Muslim, so he shot a German man working oh. in the Duna shop. And, and, and one of the things I, I tried to discuss after this event, and I was asked as a Jewish person in Germany to talk about this, is like, we lost two people, yes. and they were neither Jewish nor Muslim. Because if there's anything we've learned from history is that right-wing extremists hate everyone that's not part of their tiny little group. Mm -hmm. And once they're done with everyone, they hate themselves too. Because these are people who are consumed with frustration, with violent impulses, with groundless hatred. And I don't know how far we really get when we try to understand them. Mm -hmm. Because how much do we need to understand hatred? Um, I feel like it's important to understand how to combat it, but mm -hmm. not really to understand um, what its, its uh, uh, impetus is, what its motivations are. I, honestly, human nature has always had some uglier sides. But uh, you know, m me personally, of course, I see r right wing <laughs> extremism overlapping with religion and especially I'm very, very concerned with the rise of right-wing extremist views in the religious population in Israel. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, previously, um, ultra-orthodoxy was marked by anti-Zionist stance. Um, so it rejected the secular uh, Israeli state and it rejected Zionism because it had a religious ideal of, of how Israel should be Jewish. And, um, and it believed that we had to be, uh, you know, saved by the Messiah and so on. But um, the right-wing extremism has been infecting also religious communities so that um, that you see religious people adopting right-wing views, even when these views might be anti-Semitic, they'll just take the anti-Semitism part out, but you'd use everything yeah. else, or replace anti-Semitism with, with anti-Muslim sentiment or something like that. So I, I think that right-wing extremism is a kind of religion without God, in, in a sense. Um, it's, a, it's a very um, irrational and destructive ideology um, that that offers an illusion of power mm -hmm. and and control, which is what religions have offered people throughout centuries. Um, you know, just like National Socialism in Germany was a tool for the very cynical few to gain power over a masses that was, you know, willing to consume these ideas. Um, I don't think that that right-wing extremists necessarily believe their own ideology, but I think they find their ideology a convenient means to, to power and to um, address uh, their own frustrations in society. And do you, f because I'm trying, I want to f look at the place of women in this. Is the women only there, do you think, to, as you said before, to create more children and that is needed. I wonder, is the ideology a tool to keep them under? How do you, how do you see that? Well, I think, I think that um, because almost all religions have, have structures built into them that guarantee men access to women and that right-wing ideology is very much a response to losing access to women, that I think um, that almost all of this is about 
men feeling very threatened when they don't have the ability to access um, female sexuality, female nurturing, female labor, because men cannot survive without it. They literally would not be on this earth without it. They cannot, um, they cannot maintain health, sanity, um, success, uh, pleasure, fulfillment without women. And because this dependency is there, it's terrifying. And um, there, you know, there are healthy ways which, in, in which uh, men um, address this dependency, uh, namely by seeking egalitarian and, and respectful partnership. And then there are the unhealthy ways, um, you know, which I think uh, start with, with inability in a sense, to form relationships. And since the, the, they can't form relationships, they, have no, they feel they have no choice but to grasp for ideologies that promise power instead of connection. Do you fear them? If I fear them, um, I, can't, I can't honestly say that in my everyday life I do. I've encountered them here or there. Um, they're surprisingly helpless when alone and unarmed. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, th I think that they, 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 they're scary in groups. They're very violent in groups, mm -hmm. right? Um, but when you in encounter them on their own, they look sort of a little bit ridiculous, right? I mean, they're, they're just very alienated in society. They cling to each other in order to um, give them some sense of, of, of legitimacy and, and influence, but um, they, I, I just, I mean, I, you know, the, in, in the east uh, of Germany, for example, there's always been this problem with right-wing extremism. <laughs> but these are always, almost always, like young men with very few opportunities and, um, and no access to women. There's a very, really popular story um, in Germany after the riot in Chemnitz. Um, this was like, uh, this was going around the news cycle a while back uh, where they were saying that there was like kind of, um, like a wild and impulsive riot in which young men chased minorities. And there was a video, and in the video, you see these men running down the street ch um, chasing them, and you know, it was, in all the, it was in all the news stations, but then this one man tries to join, and off stage, you hear a woman say, Hase, du bleibst hier. <laughs> And it means, and it like it means like bunny rabbit, like it's a it's a way of, of calling a man that's an endearment. Bunny rabbit, you're staying right here. And there were all these articles in the in the papers um, being like, we what we don't have in East Germany is women telling men, honey, calm down. <laughs> and and it's true, it's true. Um, women make society more peaceful and, and more loving. And the neo-Nazi movement sidelining women is about making that movement less peaceful and less loving. You cannot have women having like a strong role in, in, a, in a community uh, that wants to be violent. It doesn't work. You need to segregate women in violent communities. Thank you.